Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty. It is blisteringly bloody hot in my kitchen. It's not even 8 o'clock yet. And if I've done my editing job properly, you are watching me in black and white right now. Because this is a collaboration with my beautiful girly Kaylee. And we have both created a dupe of the Melt Moate palette. So the question is, what does this look like in here? How close have I got my dupe to the actual palette? Which colours called to me today to be applied to my lids? What does this look like in glorious Technicolor? And how much am I going to moan that I'm melting in this film? This and many other questions can only be answered by grabbing a drink, grabbing a snack, putting your feet up and enjoying the forthcoming presentation. My lovelies, welcome back from the intro that I haven't filmed yet. It is so hot in my kitchen already. You know it's bad when I have to start with the spritz. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Coconut Mist by the way. Um, my spray is a little bit foobard in that instead of coming out straight it comes out at an angle. So I normally end up squirting myself in the ear the first spray but this has got hyaluronic acid and vitamin E in it. You can use it before during after makeup. This to me feels and performs exactly the same way as the Too Faced Hangover Spray. But it's Elf, so it's cheaper. And it's not Too Faced, so it's less problematic. Right, long term viewers will know I wanted the Muerte palette from Melt. I was lusting after the Moite palette from Melt. I was saving up because, let's face it, it wasn't cheap. And, you know, <laughs> me being disabled and on benefit means I have to save up if I want stuff. I just save up enough, went to go and buy it. It was out of stock. I thought, oh, that's all right, I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait for the restock. Discontinued. I said many rude words. Many, many rude words. Then I remembered my lovely friend Kaylee, my 24 hour clock buddy, and how she had gone through her collection and had pulled out dupes for the Muerte palette. So I thought, we've got quite a lot in terms of even individual uh, shadows and I'm decluttering quite a few so it could be that I could take a pan out of palettes that I'm decluttering. Because obviously I decluttered and then Covid hit so I haven't sent my mates for them to be able to dip into it yet. So I dipped into my palette of singles and I pulled out 10 shades that I thought kind of looked like the Moite palette and then I added in an extra couple of shades that I thought complemented it nicely and this is what I ended up with. Okay. Well, they are Starting from the top here and working across each row. If I think on, I'll put a picture or I'll put swatches or I'll put something here. Try to remember. It's very early in the morning. 
uh, Makeup Obsession Hero Worship from the Be Crazy About palette. NYX Prismatic in Mermaid, that was one I had to buy. Bleach London, uh, the WUM Louder Powder. Makeup Geek in Peacock, and you can tell it's an old one because it's round, not square. Second row, Bleach London again, Louder Powder in OTB. ABH Star Cobalt, NYX Singles Asphyxiation, another Louder Powder from Bleach London, the B, which I'm guessing stands for brown, which isn't in the Moerte palette, but I thought it would make a nice, com nice compliment to the colours. And I didn't want two blanks in the thing when it's a 12 pan palette. Uh, bottom row, Makeup Obsession, Desire from the Be Passionate About palette. Another Bleach London in ISR. Colourpop Hop On and a Colourpop Ringer, which bizarrely I had two of. Still not entirely sure why. Maybe one of them was a free. I think one of them was a free because my order was delayed. So. Hayley and myself are going to be using our duped palettes to create a look with our version of the Muerte palette. Screw you, Mel. Childishness out of the way. This is still a teaching channel. Uh, it will still be talking you through each stage. Um, if you just want to see me apply the makeup, there's a speed widget. You can speed me up if you like. I really don't mind. It's a free world. But for those of you who are learning or do have chronic pain like myself, I'm going to go at a speed you can keep up with. Uh, I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment. It's going to be very up close and personal. It will literally just be focusing on my eyes. And I will talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. They have very, very similar issues in terms of how uh, makeup wears on them through the day but the workarounds in terms of applying the makeup and getting the best finish at the start of the day are very very different so I will insert that clip now and I will see you at the other end of it when I apply some of these to these now um, my eyes have this primer on it this is the Crime Pebble primer in blank page cotton I do have a discount code for this it is not affiliated I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them the reason I love the crime pebble primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. 
so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, kind of reverse panda eyes thing happening here at the moment. I'm getting down to the bottom of my little, of this pot. I've just started to hit pan at the bottom of it. Look, this is the third one of these I've gone through and I have got another one ready for when that runs out. Right, I'm going to go in with a Voldemort fee. This is actually out of one of their sets and annoyingly they don't put the bloody numbers on them so you know what they are. But it's very similar to another Voldemort one that I've got over here somewhere. Where is it? There it is. This is the 506 with the silver ferrule. And I'm going to be going in one one with the black ferrule just because it's got a slightly longer handle. Um, I always hold right at the end so that I put as little pressure on as possible and yes I'm currently naked nails because I made the mistake of buying a set from W7 and they completely wrecked my nails so I'm as you can see completely to the side of that skin down so I'm having to go naked nails for a while let them heal themselves before I can put some fresh ones on don't buy false nails from W7, false economy. Right. I'm going to start with NYX Asphyxiation, which is the navy blue. This is a satin rather than a matte, but I didn't have any matte navy blues. so There's a reasonable amount of kick up in the pan, but that's fine. I just tap back off. And it just means that I'm not putting too much on. It means you're getting pigment on your brush at least. That's always a good start. Uh, but hopefully it means I won't get too much fallout. I'm going to start off with the Viennese Waltz of Blending. So natural turns towards the nose. A flecker when we get there. And reverse turns to come back again. I'm going to start quite low down close to my natural crease and just lightly start applying this colour and building it up until I get to the intensity that I want. Now the reason I do the Viennese Waltz Blend 
It's because I'm 46 years old. I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. And by doing circular movements like this, you are gently moving the skin around so you don't get those telltale white stripes. It's taking a wee bit of building up, but it's getting there. As I said, I'd, I do sometimes struggle here and here, where I have very, very dry patches on my eyes, which struggle to actually take pigment, which would appear to be my current issue here. I just have to be patient and just keep going basically. I think I might bring that down onto the mobile lid just on the outer third there. And just sort of, yeah, I quite like that finished shape. How's your day been? We've already had a storm here this morning. Didn't last very long, sadly. The to... problem is the town that I live in was surrounded by hills. Um, so unless the storm actually comes over one of the hills and gets trapped in the valley here, we tend to get a few flashbangs and then it skirts around the outside of the hills and it's gone, which is what's happened this morning. Um, I was hoping this would come inside the hills and give us a real good storm because it's so muggy and so that horrible wet heat, you know. Um, we don't have aircon in our houses over here in the UK, um, and even though I've got my antiperspirant primer on. I am already sweating like a good one. So I'm hoping I can get this makeup done before it gets too hot so that it doesn't actually start melting off of my face. But hence why the fan is already on. Now I do keep sitting back and checking that I'm getting the same shape both sides because. I don't photoshop my finished results, the most you'll see is a silly little snapchat filter where I've got horns or you know, elliptical pupils like a cat. Um, the absolute most that I do in terms of manipulating my photos is if it comes over quite dark and it's not showing the true colour of the pigments, then I'll fiddle with the contrast and the exposure until the pigments look accurate, but I don't do any kind of skin smoothing or anything like that, because I'm not good at that sort of thing. And your eyes are not symmetrical, they're different shapes. So it's always best just to relax your eyes and just check you're getting about the same shape both sides, which it would appear that I am, which is lovely. Just gonna tap to build that pigment up there because again it's the dry patch it's struggling to I may have to rebuild that pigment back up again after I've blended the next colours into it. We shall have to see. Uh, I might go in with a slightly larger brush next. I wanted this to be quite small because I wanted to keep the detailing quite close. I think I'll go in with this. This is the Boozy Shop tapered blending brush. If ever you want to know which brush to use, if you look at the size of the head of the brush, whatever size, whatever width the head of the brush is, that's how far it will blend a shadow out. Okay, so I've got ones like this Wet n Wild which are great for blowing shadows out um, 
this looksy one is great for blowing shadows out, as you can see. So I'm going for this tapered blend because I still want to have a little bit of control over it. And I think I'm going to go into deep do I want to go today? It's a very good question. I think I'll start off with the bleach powder in ISR which is the uh, sort of russety red and I'm just going to start that off on this outer edge. Now if you're blending two colours together it's always best to start off blending half on the colour you've already laid down and half on the skin that has no pigment on it yet and you will find that you will then get a much smoother blend than if you try if you put it straight on the, the bare skin and then try and blend the two colours together so just give this a bit of a a bit of a zhuzh, zhuzh. So, Kaylee, we have collabed on quite a few things now, actually. Um, we started off in a group collab, um, and at the time I was very... I didn't want to ask people to collab because I'd just had a very, very rude person who for some reason seems to be very, very bloody popular. Um, I'd had a very rude rebuttal. Don't get me wrong, if you don't want to collab with me, that's fine, but you don't have to be rude about it. And this particular person was extremely condescending and rude, which I don't have any time for. But it did bring back the old shy me, so I then did not want to ask anybody to collab in case they said no. So I was collabing with the people I'd collabed with before but I wasn't collabing with anybody new unless it was in a group collab. And Kaylee sent me a message going, we haven't collabed on our own yet, shall we? And I was so glad she'd asked because I'd wanted to ask her for a long time. Um, I'm just cleaning the brush off, I should have said this earlier with the previous brush. I'm just cleaning the brush off on a, uh, a clean washcloth. Um, I used to use colour switches but they're way, way too harsh on the bristles of your brushes so I prefer to use a washcloth or a microfiber cloth or something. Right, now I'm going to go into the brighter red Colourpop Hop On and uh, pop that next. Uh, yes, yeah, so we. I think we started off doing a pic. One of my uh, my photo inspirations. And uh, when we were working out timings, which obviously you have to do when you're going to put a collab up together, we we're working out the difference in our times. And I, because of years of working for the Royal British Legion, where we did battlefield tours worldwide etc. Everybody ex-army and all of the tour guides were ex-army or ex-navy or ex-air force. Um, they all talked in 24 hour clock and the itineraries were always done in 24 hour clock so there was never any mistaking between your flight goes at 10 in the morning or your flight goes at 10 at night you know. It's especially useful if you were dealing with two or three time zones as well, um, which often happened. You know, if we were doing a tour to Burma, you'd you'd go through about three time zones before you got there. So, just blending this in with that previous. I'm just going to deepen up outer edge of this one because I want that, that red there to be a little bit more punchy. 
so I just I completely forgot myself and sent timings across in 24 hour and she replied back yes someone understands 24 hour clock and that's when we just, I found out that she's actually ex-military she um, she got invalided out because of a back injury so she's used to 24 hour clock and it does make life so much easier if you can learn 24 hour clock trust me it will make your life so much easier when you are trying to plan things because if I say right if you upload yours at 0600 and I'll upload mine at 12 she knows I'm talking about for her to upload at 6am and I will upload at noon or if I was to say okay if you upload at I don't know, 0800 and I'll, I'll upload at 1400 then again we instinctively and we just love that we, we just laughed and joked that we're 24 hour clock buddies um, but I, I absolutely consider her one of my closest friends that I've made on YouTube um, we don't chat that often but when we do it's like we've never had a break from chatting you know um, I'm going to go into Bring some turquoise in, I think. I'm going to go into the Bleach London WUM powder. These bleach ones are very, very dusty. I'm going to be super, super careful with those. And I'm going to run this at the front here. And just bring that down. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see what look she's doing. Um, we didn't put any restrictions on it, just said, you know, you've got to use your dupe palette. And obviously I'm not going to use any colours that are not in the original Muerte palette, listen, I think I am. I'm not going to use my brown, put it that way. Um, it's, I've, I've been looking, ever since I did this, and we sort of arranged the date that we were going to do our collab, I, I, every time I sit down to do my makeup, this screams at me, you want to use me? And I'm like, yes, but not yet. I've got other films I have to do and I know that the minute I start playing with this one I'm not going to want to play with anything else for a few days. So it'll work out quite well because I'm filming this on the Friday uh, to go up tomorrow and I haven't got another film up until Tuesday which means all over the weekend I can play with this and then Monday I can record Tuesday's film. Um, Kaylee also does, uh, she's the Project Pan Queen as well. She hits pan on things like you would not believe. I don't know whether she's just very, very hard on her shadows or if she just uses more makeup than I do. Because admittedly there's, there's a lot of days when my chronic pain is so bad I just can't sit here and put makeup on. Um, if I have to go anywhere, I'll. I've got a liquid concealer and pressed powder in my handbag, and I'll. I'll use that just to. Sort of cover up the dark circles and any blemishes. That may be. Apparent. And then sort of set them with the set powder, but I don't wear eyeshadow every day. I just I physically can't. Um, yes, I had to pull this lid out then because I've got super super deep creasing just here, which is where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old by the ophthalmic hospital, and they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly before I lost the sight in it completely. Um, and if I don't, on that side, 
pull the lid out to straighten the creasing no matter how much of this sort of swirly Viennese waltz blending that I do um, I end up with white stripes where the skin is folded over on itself and I also get the issue where it builds up loosely in the crease and then starts falling into my eye during the day which is so painful don't stretch your eye out unless you absolutely have to though I feel kind of like a kingfisher at the moment I'm, I'm not mad at it I'm quite happy so far hmm. right let's grab a Jeffrey Voldemorphy lip brush in JS24 I like these because they've got like a point on them look let me see, you can get right into that corner nice and easily. So I think I'm going to start off. Um, just trying to decide which of the two shimmers are the lighter. I think the next one is the two that I'm looking at. Right, I'll get my Revolution Cucumber Spray ready to wet the brush after I've applied the pigment because you never put a wet brush in a dry pigment unless you want to kill it. So, I'm going to start off by going into NYX Prismatic in the shade Mermaid. Now, you can buy these in individual black cases which is what I've done at first don't ever try and depot them because they will break but if you buy them individually without the black casing around it they're absolutely fine so if you're going to want to use them in a Z palette or something then buy them without the casings on so I've wet both sides and I've just dried this ferrule off here by tucking it into my knuckles and spinning because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here loosening the glue because then your bristles will fall out and you won't have a brush you'll have a stick hmm. right, so I'm going to go right into the inner corner with this and drag this out to just past the point where the blue is. That is stunning. Just dry the brush off, go back in, pick up some more pigment. I was originally going to just sort of like pull various different palettes out but then I, I started having a look in my individual shades and realised that if I took two shades out of two palettes that I was decluttering and bought the shade that I'm using now I could dupe it completely so that's what I did right the creasing you can see is about the width of this nail so I come across leave a gap about the width of that nail again then put my finger on and gently stretch the lid out just enough to flatten the creases, I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll. And I'll apply the pigment as quickly as I can and then gently let go again and then continue to apply it across the rest of the lid to the same point that I did on this eye. Like I said, don't pull your eye around like that unless you've already got the same issue that I have. Right, and now I'm going to go into Colourpop Ringer. This is a slightly different shade. It's not exactly the same as the one in the Muerte palette. This is a little bit more warm, a little bit more, it's got like an apricot undertone to it. But it was as close as I could get. So 
whole point of this exercise was to pull from what I already had. I'm just going to pop this on the back half of that mobile lid and then I will use the tip of the bristles to gently buff where it meets the mat there and then lightly drag across where it meets that mermaid shade so we get a nice blend between the two. Oh, I'm loving this look. I know I shouldn't say it because I've done it myself, but I'm loving this look. If anybody has the Melt Moate palette and doesn't want it, I'll happily take it off your hands. <coughs> like anyone's going to want to give that up. But, I am extremely happy with my little dupe that I have made. Same thing here. Put this on the back half the mobile lid and then buff and blur where it meets matte shade there and then lightly drag just across where it meets the turquoise look at that I'm going to pause you, my darlings, before I spout any more weird British nonsense at you. Um, and I, I will be back once I have put some foundation and whatnot on to finish off this eye look with you. Uh, so I've got a bit of wait now before I can see you again, but you, my darlings, will see me absolutely instantly. Hello. Currently dying with heat in my kitchen. Literally, as soon as I've finished filming, Taking some photos. This is all coming off. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Right. Um, I used the Makeup Geek Peacock in my brows. And I'm about to use exactly the same shade underneath my lower lash line. It is already 30 degrees in my kitchen and it's not even half past seven yet in the morning. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We don't get any warning in the UK. One day it'll be cold, the next day, boom, we get heat like this. You don't get any time to acclimatise. I'm just dabbing at my top lip. Try and keep some foundation on there. Um, I'm going to go into the WUM shade that I used here to buff this lower lash line out. I really can't wait to see what Kayla's come up with for her look. I wonder if she's hit pan on any of her uh, any of her dupe shades yet. Honestly that woman's an absolute inspiration when it comes to panning things. I genuinely don't know how she does it. this Ofra glazed 
donut highlight which is the pure white the Mickey tutorials do the first one of the first ones she did because I've still got it in the original packaging don't you love getting an eye booger right in the middle of filming just when you're about to do you in a corner as well I like to take mine under the tear duct and just blend it in with the shades that I've done underneath because I have super watery eyes I struggle putting anything on my waterline it just will not stay right I'm going to pause you one last time chuck some mascara on some lippy put some more of this highlight on brush my hair out or do something with it be back with my finished look again for you instant hello yes I'm having to double fan it's too hot it is way too hot so let's see if I can get through this without melting uh, obviously I've got the Nikki highlighter on here as well I used my essence lash princess the orange one the lipstick is the Wayne Goss Amaryllis. So this is my finished look with my dupe for the Moate palette. Sorry I got fluff up my nose. So if you're one of my 4F babies Please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you and they're still leaving my films in your news feed. It's not obvious that you've been unsubscribed. Once you've done that, a bit of a like, a comment, and maybe even a cheeky little share would be super appreciated. And once you've done all of that, I'm going to need you to go over to my beautiful girly Kaylee, my 24 hour clock buddy panning princess and check out her look and see exactly which colours she was drawn to from her dupe Moete palette. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you've made it this far through I'm guessing there was something you enjoyed even if it was just slowly watching me melt into a puddle in my kitchen. Seriously though, it would be lovely to welcome you to the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube, it's super easy to do. You just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. You ring my bell, ring my bell. And say yes, and all of them until YouTube stop asking you the same damn questions just phrased differently and then hopefully they'll tell you, oh, I don't know, one in four of my films because let's face it, they're not exactly being very helpful at the moment to creators especially smaller creators like myself yes I'm fanning myself, it is just if my husband were here, he'd be fanning me for me because he always tells me he's my biggest fan. <laughs> okay, it's definitely time to go if I'm starting with the dad jokes. Talking of my films though, there are an awful lot that I've already got uploaded that you can watch. There are product tutorials, there's other challenges that I've got like this. There's tag films, there's collabs, uh, I even read you my favourite poem, what more could you want? So, basically, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and try not to move where it's this bloody hot, chill out, and just watch a few films. That's next door moving their table on the kitchen floor by dragging it instead of lifting it. Ah. Admittedly it does sound a little bit like my back when I'm getting out of bed in the morning but... 
right, my darlings, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.